Welcome to working with the pivot editor. This video is a direct sequel to the last video, so I recommend you watch the last video if you haven't already. Where we left off was we created a basic data set, and the pivot editor works with data sets. Data sets are created by the data managers in the organization, and they are the rules and constraints which govern data and they allow analysts to use the pivot editor to build visualizations based on those data sets. Here we've built a very simple data set that has host equals homework and then it includes all of these fields. If we simply click on pivot to enter the pivot editor, it will ask us to select the data set that we want to work with. There's only one data set, it's the one we created. When we first enter the pivot editor, you'll notice that we have some default values already preset. In the filters area, we have all time, and in the column values, we already have one column value that's count of all events in the data set. These are the things we manipulate in the pivot editor to build our statistical table and eventually to build our visualization, which we'll select from the left side here. The filter area is used to reduce the result count for the data set. For example, I could do a filter of only the last 30 days or something like that, and that would reduce the result count. You could imagine if you're working with huge data sets, filtering those data sets would be extremely important. Time is essential to as a first filter for any data set, uh, but we can add other filters as well that will reduce this data set. And notice that only the fields that we selected to be in our data model are here. So you can imagine that by doing this, we make the analyst's job a lot easier. Here we have split rows, and what this does is splits out the pivot results by row. For example, we could have a row that represents a particular date and time. We could, for, we could have a row for each month, or a row for each week, etc. We can also split the values by column, but be careful with splitting values by column. Column values are almost always numeric in nature. There's some sort of count or sum or average. So let's start working with our data set. First of all, let's constrain this by time. And let's say, let's choose a relative timestamp and we'll go to 120 days ago and apply that. Now we filtered this down to only 205 events. And now we're, remember we're pretending that we are the data analysts now. So we want to find out specific backup data and we want to build a report on that. So let's add a row for time. And what period do we want? Let's say days will work and we'll do the default sort. Now we have one row per day. So that's what split rows means. We still have the default column value of count of all events. So this is counting all events on that day. But that's not really going to help us in our analysis of the backup data. So let's click on this and change it to backup volume. Give it a friendly name. And notice here that we can do different kinds of calculations. This is assuming that it's a numerical value. And there's only distinct values in the data set, so we can do sum will be fine. It's going to sum it up per day. Backup volume. Awesome. Now we might also want to know a source IP address, for example. And we can manipulate these if we wanted to. We could move, we could simply drag and drop the rows around. But I think we have a good amount of data to build a very basic visualization. 
So I'm envisioning a line chart or an area chart with time on the x-axis and volume on the y-axis and then colored by the source IP. Let's see if we can do that and I think maybe we'll try an area chart and right now time is on the x-axis and volume is on the y-axis. So let's scroll down to colors, add color and the color should be the source IP and let's see what that does. Okay, now this could be useful. The data in the data set generates a random source IP, but if we assume that we only have a distinct set of systems, then this could be a really valuable area chart. So let's make this zoom in just a little bit. And in the time range, let's do a date range and we'll do April 1st to April 30th, one month. There are way too many source IPs here, so let's instead change the color to something that has discrete values and, and not as much, maybe level. Now this is a much better chart because we can see the date, we can see the volume on the y-axis, and then we can see that it's colored by level, so maybe error level or something like that. That's the area chart. We can see if a different chart might work better for us, maybe a line chart. And as you can see on this where there is no data, it is not connecting them. We can change that simply by clicking this here under general where it says no values. We simply connect. It makes it look a lot better. And we can maybe see what a bar chart would look like. Pretty busy there though on a bar chart. What about a column chart? Again, this, this could be useful. I think maybe if we do a stacked, there, that's really actually quite nice.